I am facing a Delaric castle. Apparently, I was an ancient king who died long ago. In order to revive myself, I need to step inside, but there are quite a few people here preventing me to do so. I am then distracted by the most beautiful dog I've seen. I then decide to take her outside, because it seems like she desperately needs to take a p Dreams. Dreams are a wonderful thing. Imagine some of us humans live through countless scenarios. Dreams can be meaningful, they can be inspiring or even quite terrifying, but they all have something in common. Sleep. But what is sleep? Sleep is a concept known to mankind since forever. It wasn't really discovered. We have been doing it, like we're eating, or washing, or doing the puzzles in the newspaper. It is a basic human need. As Tononi and Cirelli put it in a paper, it is a state of low mobility and reduced responsiveness to external stimuli. Yep, just like death. No, it is a reversible state. We, we shut down for some time and then we wake up. In the middle of the 20th century, with the invention of the electroencephalogram, it became clear that sleep was more complex than we thought. First, what is an electroencephalogram, or EEG for short? Well, let's take a human brain. If we zoom into the cortex to look at its cells, we can see that the neurons are very well aligned. They are, in fact, so well aligned that when they decide to convey a message together, we can measure it with a piece of metal. And that's so cool. So, if they fire all together, the EEG will show a curve of high amplitude. But if they fire randomly, the signal will be completely different and the EEG will only show little scribbles. So, basically, in the 20th century, we invented a machine that could measure cortical synchrony. So, to put it more simply, the machine measures how much the neurons under the electrode fire the messages at the same time. So, when you awake, all of your neurons will fire randomly, so your EEG will look like little scribbles. Low amplitudes and the oscillations are quite fast. During sleep, though, your neurons start to have long periods of silence together. So the EEG shows slow waves of high amplitude. And then later on, we discovered there was another phase of sleep, where the EEG looked like wakefulness. We call this phase paradoxical phase of sleep, because it looks like wake, or rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep for short. It's also when the dreams are the most vivid. So there you have it. Three main states of vigilance. Wakefulness, REM sleep, and non-REM sleep. How does the body knows when to fall asleep? So there are two hypothesized processes. The first relies on your inner clock. A small part of the brain, called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, is activated by light and regulates your inner clock, which then can let your body know if it's time to go offline. And it's not immediate, so that's why we get jet lags. The other process is homeostatic, and it models how your need for sleep increases with the amount of time you spend awake. And what's cool about it is it can be correlated to the amplitude of slow waves. With the longer you've been awake, the bigger the amplitude. And the magic happens during sleep, where we can actually see the slow wave activity dropping over time. So there you have it. Sleep is a reversible state of low mobility and low responsiveness to external stimuli, and also the realm of dreams. It is composed of non-REM sleep and REM sleep, and its regulation fits models driven by your inner clock, a circadian clock, and a homeostatic process. Thanks so much for coming. Sleep well. Dream well. <laughs>